Hello everyone, this is Glenda Winkleman, and welcome back to Creative Grandma. I'm trying something new today. Uh, I wish I could live stream so I could uh, talk to everybody and answer all the questions I've been receiving. I have a lot of emails saying I wish I could be a designer, how do you become a designer, all kinds of questions about crocheting, the craft. So this video is on how to start crocheting designing and how to get your designs published so basically if you have no interest in being a designer this vi video is still very informative because I'm going to show you um, several resources and even if you just want to become a better crocheter if you're starting out and you just need all the information you just don't know where to get it I'm hoping that this video helps everyone. I'm going to start um, basically with this video. There's three steps. You got to know your craft. You got to design your projects and getting published. But first, for just the people who want to start crocheting and be a better crocheter and for the people who want to start designing, I did do a material list of supplies you need if you want to start designing or even just crocheting for yourself. Um, so first of all, you're going to need an assortment of crochet hooks. I just have mine in a caddy and a lot of them are stuck in projects in the work in progresses that I have all over the place. So when I need a hook, I'm usually trying to run around and find them in some of the projects. But uh, have yourself a nice assortment of crochet hooks. You're also going to need a tape measure for measuring your gauges, your finished products. You're going to need an assortment of scissors. You're going to need yarn needles. You're going to need thread or yarn. And the most important thing in, when you're designing your own projects is you need to get a writing tablet and you need to keep track of everything you're doing. So get that writing tablet and write everything down your what your yarn you're using what size hook you're using row by row stitch by stitch because there's sometimes I start designing and I might be distracted by the TV and you know you forget to do a row and then you're boy when you're done you're backtracking and you're dissecting every little thing you did and that's really important so make sure you have your writing tablets you're also going to need uh, drawing paper if you want to kind of sketch out just get your drawing paper sketch out your design of what you think it might look like and that really helps because there's times where you know I'm just trying to come up with an idea when you when you just go brain dead and you just want to sit there and play around sometimes you come up with some really good ideas when you're just messing around you're going to need graph paper and this is Sometimes you can use the graph paper for sizing items and also if you're um, crocheting using graphs you will want to graph out your project with you know I use colored pencils uh, it's best to use the erasable kind because boy do I have to erase a lot when something just doesn't come out right uh, so get yourself an assortment of Pencils, make sure they have good erasers or you buy an extra eraser because when I'm charting out designs, I do have to erase a lot. It's not, when you see a finished chart, they look nice, but sometimes the people who put those designs together, there's a lot of work involved to make them come out just right. Pens, pencils, your colored pencils for charting, coloring your designs and sketches, your markers. Okay, then the next thing is you're going to need several different sizes of containers to put your work in. Now this is very important because editors and when you send your work into a publication, it has to be clean. If you, if your grandchild come over and got cookie stuff on it and it left a stain or you spill a little bit of coffee, uh, they're not going to accept it. Your work must be clean. No pet hair all over, no no stains. So what I use is Hefty 
has these new 2.5 gallon bags and you can see they're they're pretty nice size if you're making baby sweaters or a sweater you can keep your project in as you're working on it to keep it clean so these I always have these on hand and then the next size I use if you if you're designing afghans or making afghans I also like these Ziploc big bags these are really excellent bags for the larger projects it really keeps them clean it keeps your stuff organized you can keep your yarn that you're using in there plus your project so make sure you pick some of those up now the most important item that you should buy when you want to crochet design or work on any type of project is a binder you're going to get just a regular binder like this because the information I'm going to show you in this video and the resources you're going to want to put that information in this book this is going to be like a crochet Bible to you this is going to be the standards that you're going to use it's going to go it's going to be the go-to book that you use when you uh, need to do a pattern or if you're working on a pattern even if you're working on someone else's pattern and you're just crocheting and you have questions that's what you're going to go to when I give you the information the other thing that you should buy and for some reason I don't know what I did with them but I'll just show you oh here they are page protector sleeves so when you print out the information I show you I'm going to show you where to go and get it you, you put each page in these and then what I do I, I'm updating to the pink notebook because my stuff is so old and ratty that I just I just called it the crochet guidelines but I have it inside this book it has the page protectors on it and uh, I can just flip through it has all the resource materials that you could ever ever need when you're designing a project and I'll go over all this with you shortly of where to get all this information wonderful website so just get the page protectors the other thing you need to do is you could use like the the hard plastic totes to store your projects so if you don't have an area in your home like you don't have a workspace or anything I suggest getting the big plastic totes and you can keep all all these things here all your designing tools all your crocheting tools in that tote and that could be like your little office tote or just find a small place in your home you know to get organized to start so okay first I'm going to get right into the yarn standards and guidelines for crochet and this is for knitting as well and this is a win wonderful website the craft yarn council so I need you to go I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my computer so if you want to go to www.craftyarncouncil.com I'll put this in the video on my screen so you know how to spell it and I'll be right back and I'll meet you on that website okay I'm back and I'm at the craft yarn council website and this is what it should look like so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to navigate to get to go ahead and get the standards and guidelines for crochet and knitting this is a 21 page guide it is packed full of information that you must have if you're not going to be a designer you have no interest you still need this information if you're going to crochet items just so much information that you just need to see it to believe it this is a wonderful organization uh, they create standards that they want the whole industry to use and that makes it easier for everyone when you're working on crochet designs because everybody's following the same format so to speak uh, to do designing and crocheting so what you're going to do is go to the right side of your computer screen and just go ahead and scroll down all the way down 
a lot of information if you get on here and you just want to mess around and see what's on here whoops I went back to the top of the page okay so you're going to go to the bottom of the screen and down here you'll see what says designers so a lot of people might think well that don't pertain to me I'm not a designer well you're crocheting so it still has the information that you need to make projects and no measurements so go ahead and click right here on this so click on that and then it takes you to the craft yarn councils yarn standards so for a printed copy of all this information you're going to go over to the right side of your screen I'm going to just come down a little bit here and you want to go where it says downloadable guidelines so right here when it highlights I'm trying to see I don't I can't see what this is doing on my my camera okay right there so click on the downloadable guide and this is what comes up like I said this is 21 pages I'm going to just scroll down a little bit so you can see like I said this is a wonderful wonderful resource from the craft yarn council so it starts and it has the crochet master list of abbreviations and it also includes the knitting master list of knitting abbreviations and it explains skill levels the standard body measurements and sizing it tells you how to measure it lists size charts for baby child youth woman a man your head measurements and foot measurements it also goes over the standard yarn weight system hooks and needles it explains yarn label information it explains designer standards and guidelines you want to submit a project idea where do you start wonderful 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 information there it gives you the basics there's so much information that once you go over these guidelines and you know your craft that is the first step you must know your craft so this will help you learn your craft but you have to learn your craft before you go to the next step it also tells you designer pitfalls now this is wonderful because if you're not a designer yet it actually explains to you what not to do so like it says you get to submit your work but if you do these pitfalls you might never get another chance to submit to this editor because they'll just remember she, what was this woman thinking she sent me a project that had a coffee stain on it so it's simple things but you know you need to learn the pitfalls and it goes over several and it's very good information uh, industry standards and guidelines for designers and what you should do before you begin a project and what to submit so very very good information like I said there's a lot of information here I would say make sure you print this out keep this on hand when you're doing any type of crocheting now this is the crochet master list and as you can see if if you don't know how to read a pattern this will help you because it explains what the symbols mean and the abbreviations and it also is wonderful because if you're if you want to be a designer or you made something and everybody says oh my could can you give me the pattern for that and you just don't know how to write the pattern this tells you this this will tell you how to write the pattern for instance um, I'm trying to think remain or remaining REM so that means if you say work seven work a single crochet in each of the remaining seven single crochet then you would know how to write the pattern you would use REM instead of remain or remaining uh, repeat that's just when you repeat 
you know, the same thing over and over for the pattern across or around the row. Uh, just wonderful, wonderful information. I, I, I can't say enough good things about the Craft Yarn Council because this is just wonderful information. And a lot of the crocheters might already know about this website, but if you're new and you've never heard of it, this is an excellent, excellent resource for anyone. Now this is for the knitters. So knitters or crocheters, this is both for you. It goes over the skill levels. of, And this is important if you're writing a pattern. You need to know whether it's for a beginner, if it's an easy pattern, intermediate. And it explains what each skill level means. So for instance, intermediate is a project with a variety of stitches, such as basic cables and lace, simple double pointed needles and need knitting and the round needle techniques mid le mid level shaping and finishing now this pertains to crocheting too uh, this one's for the crochet sorry I was reading on the upper part uh, but it, it tells you the different skill levels for knitting and crocheting and then you go down and we have the standard body measurements and sizes so and and again uh, these are the industry standards but if you're making something you know custom for somebody like say they have longer arms than a normal person then this could also help you uh, figure out the sizing just going by the, the sizing charts here it also tells you how to measure your body to get the correct measurements for what you're making so this is very, very important too. So just follow the number. One is the chest bust size. We'll jump over to seven. Seven is the armhole depth. And all kinds of things that would really help you making custom designs or to make standard designs in the correct shaping. Because nobody wants to receive, an editor does not want to receive a sweater that the sleeves are five inches too long. So follow these industry standards on these charts and you will do fine. So here's the size charts for the baby. And then they list for child. They go to youth. I'm just skimming down over this because when you print this out from their website, you'll have all this information and you can, you, you know, really take your time and review it. Women's, men's sizes your head circumference sizes it tells for preemie baby toddler child woman and man then we jump down to the foot size which I probably should have used this when I did the toasty toast slippers so I could have made them in three different sizes uh, so that's for the foot size and then we get into the standard weight standard yarn weight system where it explains the different categories, the gauge ranges and recommended needle and hook sizes for the lace, the super fine, fine, light, clear up to the jumbo yarns. Like I said, this is excellent, excellent information. There was a lot of time involved in putting this information together and uh, companies like this, like the Craft Yarn Council, this is invaluable information if you're, if you're going to do the craft. This information is for hook and needle sizes, so it gives you, um, this is the millimeter range size, and it converts it over to the U.S. size. So I know that we have a lot of international crocheters, and I'm sorry because as much as I design, I, I'm a U.S. designer, and I still get a little confused with the overseas you know uh, wording because they don't even have a single crochet overseas they they call a single crochet a double crochet or something and that always confused me so this this information will help when you do conversions and then we get into the yarn label information and that explains how to read a yarn label and then we get into the designer standards and guidelines so there's a lot of information here on you want to submit a project idea where do you start excellent excellent information so this gives you the basics and then this gives you some of the designer pitfalls it gives you uh, information like 
the pattern itself, the materials, uh, just a lot of information that if you've never done it before or even if you have designed before, it's always good to review this information because sometimes the simplest things you just overlook. Not, not because you meant to, it, it just happens sometimes, even, even to the best of us. Um, so like I said, uh, very good information. Uh, things like never submit your design idea to more than one company at a time. Because if you send a design to say Annie's Attic and then you turn around and send it to Leisure Arts at the same time, well what are you going to do if they both get back to you and say yes we want it? That's a no-no in the industry. You submit it to one company at a time and you wait until they either accept it or reject it. And I did want to say that I have been rejected many, many times. It's nothing personal. It's just that sometimes I might have submitted in the wrong season. They might have been months ahead to what I thought they were. Like I might have submitted a Christmas design and they might have already finished their Christmas you know deadlines so then they are in spring and I'm behind so these are all things I'll go over with you um, so read over some of these pitfalls and then we're getting down to the end here with industry standards and guidelines for designers uh, what to do before you begin your project all all these information and then it actually tells you some of the things in order of what you have to do to write the pattern, what the editors want to see, and how to put it together. And then at the end here, we have uh, the Craft Yarn Council's information. They're located in Carleton, Texas, with their phone number, their email address. So uh, if you're into crocheting or knitting or any type of craft, uh, excellent excellent guidelines please make sure you go to the website please print them out and please put them in your spiral bound notebook and keep that as a reference for always and also for your notebook in the next section I'll be right back I'm going to go over um, how you find out where to send designs how to look on the websites to get um, crochet or guidelines because some companies each company might be different uh, and things like that. So uh, I'll be right back. Uh, grab a cup of coffee and we'll finish this up and I'll go on to the next step. So now I'm back and the first website we're going to go to is www.leisurearts.com and this process of what I'm going to show you you can do with any website that you want to research to try to find a place to send your crochet designs. So we're on Leisure Arts and what you're going to do is you're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page. And this is just a method of researching where to go. And my suggestion to you is when you find these websites and you do get the information, always, always, always print it out and put it inside your notebook that I asked you to start with your standard and guidelines. Keep all your design submission guidelines in one place. That way you can reference them them and see who you might want to send your designs to. So we're going to go over here on the left side of the screen. Let me see if you can... I don't think this is showing up. Let me uh, zoom out a little. There we go. We're going to go down here where it says designer guidelines and you're just going to click on that and then another screen will come up and it will give you all the information you need. Let me zoom in a little. I'm not sure. Oops. I'm just going to zoom in. Uh, it's only showing the top portion of all the information but it says design submission guidelines uh, it tells you a little bit about them they currently publish books and leaflets in all craft categories so if you crochet and you do another craft like plastic canvas or you're really good at quilting uh, this is the same process of what all designers use they go in they look for the design submission guidelines it tells them the address of the company 
where to send your work. Uh, it tells you you may send an email letter with a picture for your submission. Uh, and it, it tells you what not to do and what to do. So just scroll down over, over the information. Then I just go up and I just click print. I print that information out and I insert it in my book. So this is one place and Leisure Arts is wonderful, <clears throat> wonderful company. Uh, if you get your designs printed in one of their leaflets, then you get royalties and that's a wonderful way to make money. You have your, your royalty checks coming in every quarter and just just a wonderful way if you're serious about designing of getting started that's an excellent way this next website I'm taking you to is Annie's so you're going to want to go to www.annies-publishing.com and this is the screen that should come up on your computer. Let me zoom out a little. So at Annie's website, Annie's is a publishing company of many, many craft magazines and leaflets. But since I'm a crochet channel, I'm just going to stick with the crochet. But if you're a cross stitcher, quilter, um, card maker, anything like that, these concepts are the same for no matter what if you want to design. So we're on Annie's page. So what you're going to do is you're going to scroll down and you're going to go down and you'll see a purple screen here and it shows you magazines, catalogs, clubs, and web content. So you're looking for designer guidelines. Okay, well nothing here says designer guidelines. So when you're doing your research, now I'm showing you how to do it on these websites, but if you see a particular magazine or a publishing company, then you go on their site and you just, you know, fool around and try to find it. If you cannot find it, then what I would suggest is you go to customer service, click on that and just send an email and ask if they could send you a copy of their current designer guidelines. So now we're on this site. Now Annie's has two crochet magazines. They have Crochet the Magazine and Crochet World. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on Crochet World. That's a very, uh, well both magazines are very popular. So click on Crochet World. This screen comes up has a lot of information about the magazine, their newest issues, some of the projects. Uh, very, very nice site. We're going to keep scrolling down. <clears throat> so now on your left side of your screen in this green area here, let me see if I can zoom up a little bit more. Whoops, for you. It's hard trying to do this because I can't see what my camera's showing. Here it says designer guidelines. So we're going to click on this. Okay, so right here it says designer guidelines, what to know, want to know more about becoming a designer for this magazine. So you would click submission guidelines. So we're going to click that. And then what happens is, let's see if I can move my camera up a little. Okay, it's showing. Now this is an old copy. This is 2015-2016. So this was not updated or nothing changed so they didn't update it. But you can always email and ask for the correct information. But it gives you Crochet World Magazine, editor Carol Alexander, the email address to the editor. It tells you what they publish, a 68-page magazine offering techniques and patterns for crochet. Um, so, it's not... Yeah, I was reading. It's really not showing the actual guidelines. Um, this is just the general information. Let 
Okay, so I'm not seeing the actual how to submit it, but this gives you the contact person. If you would like, you could go ahead and email the editor. And then down here is Crochet Magazine. It lists the editor and submissions must be sent to the editor. So mostly nowadays, everything is through email. It's all internet interaction and it's wonderful because you get a faster response than mailing and then they have to mail stuff back and so the internet is wonderful so these are the two magazines and then down here you have Annie's pattern books now these are the leaflets so if you had a concept of say a, a dishcloth collection uh, I just done a 12 piece set of dishcloths uh, that will be coming out this fall but I went through Annie's pattern books for the for the leaflets wonderful wonderful uh, company the people are so nice there and, and you gotta remember when when you're crocheting and designing um, these people are just ordinary people like us you know they get up every morning have their coffee and they get started with their day um, designers are everyday people who you know what made them to decide to become a designer they they all started out with learning how to do it and sending their first project in so you know it didn't happen overnight uh, it won't happen overnight for you um, you just have to learn the ropes take it slow and uh, you'll get there so with Annie's pattern books uh, that is all done through the internet as well so I hope this helped you with with showing you how to kind of research and get the guidelines now I'm going to hit my back arrow here um, I'm going to go back because there was one other important information here to receive an editorial calendar if you don't know what that is for the new people an editorial calendar is really important because that's what I was saying now I've I've already been rejected because I missed deadlines now these editors use an editorial calendar which tells them if you're going to submit designs we need them by this date for this issue so if it's the Christmas issue and they're working on the Christmas issue six months ahead in June they may say we want all submissions by June 1st and if you send it after they've already reviewed that issue and you miss that deadline then you will get rejected not because your pattern isn't good enough it's because you didn't file the editorial calendar and that has happened to me several times so it is important that you play, pay close attention so when you get the the uh, designer guidelines you can go ahead and email that editor and ask if you could have the current uh, current copy of their most recent editorial calendar and that gives you a better idea and it may even give you ideas you know you might want to do an afghan but they uh, they want sweaters for that issue so go ahead and do that uh, this says contact the editor you would just click on that button now my computer wasn't letting me do that um, for some reason so what I did was I copied and pasted this I just sent an email and I asked uh, please send me a copy of your most recent editorial guidelines thank you for the time to process my request keep it short keep it simple they're very busy people and you'll get a response in a day or two and put this all this information together when you start your notebook when you get your guidelines when you receive the editorial calendar put them together keep everything together and organized and like I said this will be your one source go to all the time book so I hope this video has uh, helped answer a lot of the questions I received from some of my subscribers and people watching the videos uh, I know I kind of stumble along and stutter because sometimes I'm thinking too far ahead of myself for what I'm gonna say so uh, thank you for bearing with me 
on doing this video. Um, I really do think that um, all this information is a great resource to have on hand. And just especially if you want to design, please read over um, the uh, standards and guidelines for crochet from the Craft Yarn Council. Visit their website. They have excellent, excellent resources on there. So much information that I could go on and on and on. So uh, get your notebook. Get online. Print that out. Do some research. Uh, oh, I, the one thing I did forget to mention, uh, the yarn companies like Red Heart Yarns, Coates and Clark's, Lion Brand, Cascade Yarns, any of these yarn companies, you do the same thing. Don't be afraid. Just hit that contact button and just ask, can I get a copy of your designer guidelines? They'll either say, we don't have them, or we have an in-house design team, or you'll get a copy of the guidelines. So just contact everybody and anybody, get your resources in your book, and you'll have them. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Creative Grandma. I really hope this information has been useful to you. And hopefully I can come up with other information and resources to bring to your attention to help you. If you have any questions, email me. If you have uh, ideas that you would like to see, you can go ahead and email me. And... Uh, it was fun. I, I wish this could have been a live stream so I could answer more of your questions. I'm just not that good on the computer yet to know how to do that. But thanks for stopping by and happy crocheting everybody. Until next time.